Hi, and welcome to another edition of Whiteboard Wednesday. My name is Ryan Goss, and I'm the Platform Product Manager here at Enmobi. And today we're going to be discussing first price auctions, why they are becoming more common, and what the advantages and disadvantages of them are. So first off, why are first price auctions becoming more common? And the reason is, is that there is more transparency with them, and also it, it allows the DSP the, or the buyer or even bidder, depending on which term you want to use, to be able to compete more competitively in multiple auctions. So first off, let's take a step back and just describe what a first price auction is as compared to a second price auction. So in a first price auction, the highest bidder who wins the auction will pay what they bid. So if they bid $10 and they win, they will pay $10. In a second price auction, the highest bidder who wins the auction will pay one cent higher than the second highest bidder. So if the highest bidder pays $10 and the second highest bid $8, the first bidder will end up winning and will pay one cent more, which is eight dollars and one cent. So before we get into the real disadvantages and advantages of a first price auction, we want to start off by saying that it's really important that every auction that is sent out by the auction platform should specifically say if it is a first price or first or second price auction. If the auction type is not listed, then there really is no transparency to begin with in the auction. So let's take a look at the advantages. So we know that in a first price auction, that the highest bidder ends up paying what they bid. So because of that, there is greater transparency. There's no way for the auction final price to be manipulated because in, as with the second price auction, the final price is dependent upon someone else's bid. That doesn't happen with the first price, and so there's less chance of manipulation there. The other benefit or advantage is there are no fees when it comes to a first price auction. And what I mean by no fees is because the winning bidder is paying what they bid, there's no way to tack on any undisclosed fees. That's something that sometimes can happen in a second price auction. The third advantage that we want to point out here for a DSP is that if a DSP must win multiple auctions in order to serve an ad for an ad opportunity, then they're at a real disadvantage if any of those previous auctions before the final one is not a first price auction. So we're going to go through an example right now, but we, also, we wanted to make sure that we pointed out that multiple auctions is another one of those advantages. So let's go through an example right here. And what, what common scenario, one of, one of the common scenarios in uh, the industry right now where you would see multiple auctions is with header bidding. So typically with header bidding, you will see an initial header bidding auction, and then the winner of that auction, their price will be passed into a second auction that they must also win in order to serve the ad. So for our example right here, we're going to start off and say we have an initial header bidding auction. We have two DSPs, DSP1 and DSP2, who are going to bid in it. And this is a second price auction. So let's say DSP1 bids $10 and DSP2 bids $5. So now in a typical second price auction, DSP1 is going to win and they're going to pay one cent higher than the second price auction. So they're going to pay We'll put DSP1 as the winner here. They're going to pay $5.01. So you can probably already see the disadvantage here. DSP1 was willing to bid $10, but now this price of $5.01 is what is going to be passed into the second auction. So now that we have our second auction on the ad server, DSP1 will be competing at a price of $5.01, whereas a new DSP, let's say DSP3, is going to bid $7. So in our auction here, the second one, we're going to say this is a first price auction. So now, DSP3 is going to win the auction. They're going to be the DSP that's going to serve the ad. But they won the auction at a price of $7. So the outcome of this is that we now have a DSP who didn't bid the highest, who ends up winning, and the publisher ends up getting less revenue than they would if this initial $10 bid had been passed in. So you can see if this original header bidding auction had been first price and the price of $10 would have won, then that would have been passed into the second auction, the price of $10, which would have resulted in the actual highest bidder across both auctions winning and the publisher ending up with more revenue. So switching to a first price auction is becoming more common because of scenarios like this. But it's not that simple for a DSP to all of a sudden just start bidding within a first price auction. 
Typically in a first price auction, what you will see is that the DSPs bid a little bit lower than they would in a second price auction. The reason being is in a first price, the DSP is going to pay what they bid, whereas in a second price, they're not going to, the chances of them paying that amount is very unlikely. They're going to pay a lot less. So because of that, DSPs need to have a different bidding algorithm in a first price auction as opposed to a second price auction. And because of that, they have to reformulate their algorithm. And a lot of these DSPs have not been able to do that yet. They're still kind of behind the times a little bit. So if they want to compete in a first price auction, they end up having to use a second price algorithm, bidding algorithm, and they end up paying a lot more than what they should be. So because of this, the practice of bid shading has come about. And what bid shading is, in a nutshell, is that it allows a DSP to bid in a first price auction, and if they win, not necessarily have to pay that full amount. It'll be discounted a certain percentage. What that discount is really depends on the auction platform and how they calculate that. Two of the more common calculations that are used to apply that discount are A, splitting the difference between a first price auction and second price auction price, or B, looking at the historical price that was paid for that inventory, that site or that app or that user, and then doing that. So you can see that bid shading is a positive for a DSP, and we're gonna, because it does end up allowing them to pay a little bit less price than they would with a typical first price auction. But there is a disadvantage in bid shading. And that disadvantage is that there is now less transparency. And one of the things that first price auctions were trying to do all along is that they were trying to add more transparency to the auction. So even though bid shading does benefit a DSP, it kind of takes a step backwards because now there's less transparency back into it again. So from a publisher standpoint, what are, how do they view this? What are the advantages? What do they see as the positives to that? So from a publisher standpoint, they will end up getting more revenue because a first price auction will end up paying more than a second price auction typically. And also the other advantage from a publisher standpoint is that in a first price auction, because a bidder is going to pay what they bid, it's a truer inv indication of how they value how they want to price that inventory. So from a publisher standpoint, they are going to get a more true valuation of what their inventory is worth. And so we want to, as we look at these advantages right here, we want to just point out that the first three are, are advantages for the DSP. The last two are advantages for the publisher. Now before we close this out, we want to take a look at the disadvantages. We've already mentioned that there can be less transparency introduced through bid shading. The other two disadvantages are that a buyer now has to create a new algorithm for first price bidding. And then overall, because it's a first price auction, the DSP ends up paying a higher price. So that's something that they aren't necessarily happy about, even though there are some other advantages in regards to transparency and competing across multiple auctions that are something that comes with it. So looking at first price auctions, disadvantages and advantages, there are more advantages. So it really does benefit a publisher and a DSP in the long run. What we would recommend to publishers out there is if they do plan to run a combination of first price and second price auctions, that they do a couple of things. First off, make sure that they are always indicating clearly in the bid request, whether it's a first price or second price auction, so the DSP knows what, what algorithm they should use for bidding. And the second thing is, if they are going to work with DSPs, that those DSPs have both a first price and a second price algorithm for bidding, or that they offer some type of bid shading discount. If they do that, that will increase the amount of trust and will decrease the amount of confusion that comes about um, with a combination of first price and second price auctions. So that's it for this edition of Whiteboard Wednesday. We look forward to seeing you in our next one. Thank you.